All right. So uh, we were discussing about conduction and uh, we just looked at good conductors and bad conductors, which are also called insulators. And we looked at what is the use of a good conductor and what is the use of a bad conductor. And we've seen several examples where both the, the, the property of a substance as a good conductor and the property of a substance as a bad conductor can be made use of. Now, we are going to look at the property of conduction of liquids and gases. When I explained about the which, what, which substances are good conductors and which substances are bad conductors, uh, I told that metals, which are solids mostly, except for an exception, as, as I say, the nature always have ex exceptions, um, where mercury, which is a metal, is a liquid, whereas most of the other metals are solids. And most of these metals are good conductors of, of uh, heat. So most of the conductors, most of the metals are good conductors of heat, including mercury, which is a liquid, but it's also a good conductor of heat. And that's why it's used in the thermometer. But what about, what about water, which is a liquid, or the other liquids, right? What about gases like the air? Are they good conductors of uh, heat? That's a very good question. And this experiment, which I'm going to show you, is, is, is going to talk about, is going to establish whether the water is a good conductor of heat or not. If water is a good conductor of heat, if, now, just go back to the hacksaw experiment, where a candle was kept on one end of, of the hacksaw, and we saw that in the course of time, the heat was getting conducted to the other regions of hacksaw, which, bas which basically means the hacksaw, which, is made of which was made of steel in that experiment, is a good conductor of uh, uh, heat, and it was conducting heat from the hotter regions to the colder regions. Whereas, it, let's see, does the water do that? If it doesn't, then it's not a good conductor of heat. But if it does, it is a good conductor of heat. So let us try to see that. Now, I'm going to show you a video um, where that experiment is being conducted. So let's have a look at it. So here you can see what's going on. I've got a test tube. So this is a test tube. Now, let me just stop this and try to explain uh, what the setup is. So here you can see that there's a test tube and the test tube has water in it and down below there's ice in fact and the ice is wrapped with uh, wire gauze and it is put, right? So there is ice here and that's why you are not able to see it. it's a bit blurred. That's because of the condensed condensation of air. We have discussed this before, right? So the water vapor in the, the air is condensed and because of that, uh, there's, it's, it's looking a little blurry because the, those water droplets are sticking out of the test tube. But that is because there's ice here and because of that, uh, it is cold here and is ho and hot. Now, what, what, what are we doing? We are putting a burner. Of course, this is a hard glass test tube. So, uh, the, the, and it is made of a material like borosil. So it doesn't have the issue of breaking as I explained before there could be differential expansion because of which the, the glass could break but it doesn't happen here because it's a it's a hard glass test tube which is made of a specific type of glass which doesn't have which doesn't lead to differential expansion which can lead to breakage so that's why I'm able to you know directly put a burner onto the glass and it works fine if I do that uh, with the ordinary glass it's going to break into pieces well, now, what is good? What, what, if, if, if water is a good conductor of heat, what should happen is that the heat should conduct this way, and it has to, we have to see that slowly the ice is melting, right? And then once the ice melts, and then after some time the whole thing becomes water, and after some time maybe it starts boiling. But is that what you're going to see here? Let's just go ahead and see the video. Now, you can see what is happening is that the ice is still there. There's no change to the ice, but here the water is boiling, which means what is happening. Yes, 
This water is absorbing heat from the burner and starts boiling, but it is not conducting heat at all to the other parts of the, of the water. And so, which establishes the fact that water is not a good conductor of heat. If water was a good conductor of heat, it would have conducted heat all the way and the ice, you have seen the ice also melting, but you don't see the ice melting at all. You see this water localized boiling water happening because the water in this area is, uh, is absorbing heat from the burner, but it is not conducting heat at all. and so the the ice is remaining intact here. So this experiment in fact proves the fact that it, it proves the fact that the, the water is not at all a good conductor of heat. So I probably uh, have I think with that video it's very clear what the setup is but I think I'll just explain that again right. So this is a hard glass test tube and then there's a small piece of ice wrapped in wire gauze which is put inside the test tube and then three-fourths of the test tube is filled with water and then the test tube is clamped as we saw in the video and then the, the, then on the test tube is heated with a burner at the mouth just where the, the, uh, at the, at the topmost part of the water is, is just heated using a burner and you can see after a while the water near the mouth is boiling and you don't see the ice melting right so that is that proves the fact that water is not a good conductor of heat if water was a good conductor of heat then you know we would have seen the ice also melting so that's not happening so of course there is a way in which the water can transmit heat and we'll see that later and that's what's called convection right so it can do the convection but it doesn't do the conduction at all uh, and how the convection happens is something that you'll see later and I will explain that to you and there, there is going to be movement of particles unlike conduction. In conduction, there is no movement of particles at all, right? The in the substance, there is no movement of particles as we see in Hacksaw. So, um, let's go ahead. Okay, now what about air? Is air a good conductor of heat? Now I want to bring up bring up this diagram to explain this setup which I use, which is in fact similar to the setup that we had for water. So oops, that's a that's not the that's not the right one, I'm sorry. Uh, let me just open it up from uh, the folder and show you the diagram. So this is basically what I want to show you, right? Now this is set up, you have a test tube, it's a hard glass test tube and what I, what I do is I just put a cork. Before putting the cork what I do is I take some wax, a small piece of wax and I put it inside the test tube. Right? I put it inside the test tube and then I close this, this hard glass test tube with a cork and then I put a burner and I start heating right at the mouth of the test tube. If the air was a good conductor of heat then the air would have conducted heat and because of the conduction of heat the wax would have received that heat and the wax would have seen wax melting but you don't see that instead what you see is you keep on heating after a few minutes you will see this this cork will be just pushed or what do you call the box the cork will be popped out of the test tube the why that is happening why is the cork popped out of the test tube the reason why that's happening is because the air is expanding right physical change of a substance when a heat is applied. This is something that we discussed before. So there is a physical change happening to the air. Air is ex expanding and because the air is expanding after some time, um, since this cork is there, it is not allowing the air to expand, right? Because it's, it's, it's pressed onto the, the test tube. So it is kind of saying air, sorry, you cannot expand. But you keep on heating there after some point of time, the air just pushes the cork out because because of the expansion of air, the pressure increases and the pressure will push the cork out, right? So, but still that is not establishing anything to do with that air is a good conductor of heat, 
right? So the air is not a good conductor. If the if air was good conductor of heat, as we seen in the hacksaw, the air would have conducted heat, and this wax would have been melting. So this is an experiment which very clearly establishes a fact that the air that is inside the test tube was not a good conductor of heat. In fact, air is not generally a good conductor of heat. So that's what this 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 slide is explaining. Let me just take a moment and bring up uh, the pen application. All right, let's go back to the slide. I just missed that. Sorry. All right. Now, so, so what is the setup here? So you have a hot glass test tube and then you put a small piece of wax inside the test tube. You close the mouth of the test tube using a cock, right, and clamp the test tube. And then you heat the test tube at the mouth and after a few minutes, you see the cock blowing off, but you don't see the wax melting. So as I explained to you, I think it's very clear that air is not a good conductor of heat. All right. So we have looked at conduction and we have seen the characteristics of a conduction. So we told that conduction happens in, in substances where there is the, the, the hot and the cold body is in contact. They have to be in contact. That's very important. Second is that, um, you know, there is no particle movement inside the substance when the conduction happens. And there are some materials which are good conductors of heat like the metals and there are several materials which are not good conductors of heat like wood like um, you know air um, you know wool plastics and several and most of the gases many of the liquids like water most of them many of them are not good conductors of heat so we have looked at conduction we have and we have also looked at where the good conductors can be used and where the bad conductors or insulators as you call it, can be used now we are going to get into the next mode of transmission of heat, which is called convection. Convection, let me tell you, is also extremely important as just like conduction. Understanding convection is very important because that's a very, very important mode of transmission of heat and the, the climate uh, that you have, right, the wind that you have, the, the hot currents that is there that is there in the ocean which is extremely important for the ocean life for the various wild animals in the ocean climate as i say which is very important for terrestrial animals and also the 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 animals which are aquatic animals if you say which, which is in the rivers and then it's important for formation of uh, clouds and the water cycle as you so uh, is say it's important for the wind which is the land breeze and sea breeze as it's called so there are several roles that the convection has to play um, and now you're going to be capable of explaining why all these phenomena is happening in the nature because you're going to understand this thing called convection all right so what is convection phenomenon due to which particles of a medium actually moves to source of heat and then move away from it after absorbing heat is called convection, right? And it happens in liquids and gases only, not in metals, right? Not in solids, in fact. The reason is because the convection can only happen when there is movement of particles. You can see that, right? So here it's very evident this definition in which, to which particles of the medium, right? particles of a medium actually moves very different from convection isn't it in convection there is no uh, in, uh, sorry in conduction there's no movement of heat at all in conduction there's no movement of particles at all no movement of particles right that's what you've seen, but that's not true with convection. Convection, there is movement of particles. Actually, the particles are moving from the source. Uh, um, it first moves towards the source of heat and then it moves away from it after absorbing heat. Right. So it first moves to the source of heat and then it moves away from. Now, I'm not sure whether you have observed what happens when you heat 
water in a, in a kettle. I don't know whether you have observed it, but you can see that there is a churn inside the kettle when, when you heat the water. And that churn is because of convection. Now, I'm going to explain that later on, right? And I'm going to exactly explain what ha what's happening, right? Now, but why doesn't it convect in solids? Why doesn't convection happen in, in solids at all? The reason is because the convection is happening because of the movement of particles. So, which basically means in liquids, the particles are not, right? They're, the particles are loosely held. So, that is the reason, right? Let me just... Just a moment. So, uh, oh boy, oh boy. so uh, let me just clear this. Sorry. Um, so let me go. Let me just clear it. All right. Fine. Clear. Now, in the case of uh, so, in the case of liquids and gases, and gases. What is happening is the particles inside, particles inside are loosely held. Particles inside are loosely held. Right? So they are not held tightly with each other. So because of that, they they that allows and that allows that allows allows free movement allows sorry allows free movement of particles when you say particles what are they very interesting question and you learn later on in chemistry these particles are nothing but molecules right so there's something called molecules and we'll learn what those molecules are later on don't worry about it we're going to have a chapter on elements and compounds and there you will learn what uh, what these particles are but just just wait for that but we can say they are particles right so this allows so since they are freely or loosely held they this allows free movement of particles but that's not the case of solids because of solids so let me just clear this right so what about solids? In solids, the particles are tightly held, right? In po solids, particles are tightly held. They're tightly held. And because they're tightly held, it, there's no, no free movement of particles. Of particles. Right, so that is the reason why in liquids and gases it does convection, whereas in solids there's no convection. Right, I hope that explanation is very clear because of liquids and gases, the particles inside are loosely held, so they are they have freedom of movement, whereas in solids the particles are tightly held, and so there's no freedom of movement, and there's no freedom of movement of the particles, then convection is not possible because the convection requires movement of particles. Inside, inside the substance. All right. So that is about why. That's about why. Uh, you know why convection is not happening in solids, whereas the convection happens in liquids and gases. All right. Now, I want to show you uh, an experiment which shows there is convection in liquids. Right. And I want to see. I want to also show how the movement movement of liquid is when there is convection so movement right sorry so i told you the movement movement is is first towards the heat source towards the heat source right and then away from the 
source. Right? So first the movement is towards the heat source and then it is away from the heat source. And I want to show you exactly that is what happens. So let me show you that, uh, let me show you a small video which kind of shows this happening. Let me just go. All right. So uh, let me go back and show you that. So this is an experiment. And what you see here is what is called a convection tube, right? There's a convection tube here. And this convection tube is a, the glass tube, which is uh, like a square right and this is filled with water so there's water inside this right so there is um, there is water inside this tube so there's water inside this tube and now let us see what what is done right so now what we're going to do is he's the the, the scientist here is putting a candle Right, so he's putting a candle here on this side. So what is happening to water now? The water in this region is getting hot, right? So the water in this region is getting hot. You agree with me? So this region water will be getting hot. Is getting hot here. Right? So the water is getting hot in this region. All right, now let us go ahead and see what else he's doing. He's just putting some potassium permanganate here, right? So what he did is, here, he has put some potassium permanganate. Permanganate, it is actually purple in color. So he's put some potassium permanganate here, which is purple in color, right? And then let's see what's going on. Now you can see what's going on. Don't you see that that what when he put the potassium permanganate, it, that color is slowly moving this way. So what is happening? It is moving towards. It is moving towards the heat source. You agree with me, don't you? So what is happening? It is moving towards the heat source, towards heat source, right? So why, I mean, why, why do you see the color moving? Because the water particles is moving and with the, which is nothing but water molecules, in fact, is moving towards the heat source and is also carrying the potassium permanganate uh, particles with it. And so what is happening is now there's a particle movement towards the heat source. Right now, it goes and it moves towards the heat source. Now, let us just forward a little bit, and you can see now what is happening after some time. After some time, it is moving and then it is moving away from the heat source. So, it moves towards the heat source, and now at this stage, what's happening? You can see it's moving away. So, first it moved towards the heat source and it is moving away from the heat source. Now, we can see because we can see the potassium permanganate. Uh, here, so now it is moving away from heat source, right? So it's, it first you put potassium permanganate, it's it, and you have some heating going on here because it's a candle cap. Initially, it started moving towards a heat source, and then uh, it flowed all the way here, and then it started moving away from the heat source. So in the course of time, what will happen is you will have a flow like this. It'll have a flow like this right there will be a flow of water like this which is clockwise right no anti-clockwise direction so it'll be a flow in the anti-clockwise direction so this actually proves the fact that there is first of all there is we proves a fact that there's something called conduction convection sorry there's something called convection and the convection happens 
where because of the movement of particles, that's also established in the experiment, and it also proves the fact that the movement of particles is first towards the heat source and then it is away from the heat source. And because of that, there is something called a current, right? This is what is called a current. This is not electric current, it's what's called a convection current. Convection current, which is which is basically the flow of water which is established because of convection, right? So I think this experiment kind of registers with you and you understand what's going on, right? And you can really see that happening here where the potassium permanganate is, uh, the, the color is moving first towards the heat source and then moving away from the heat source. And that actually really explains the fact that how the convection happens and what is the reason for convection. All right. Now I'm going back to the presentation now, right? And let us go ahead and let me just explain uh, the setup here. I don't think I need to uh, go through the diagram because it's very clear from the, the video what it is, right? So you have a convection tube as we saw there, right? Um, uh, I would suggest you to also go to go through the textbook, uh, which uh, for the the ICSE and CBSE text textbooks. Um, uh, please refer to my initial video, which which is a startup video where I'm talking about what are the textbooks which I'm referring to and what are the materials which I'm using for preparing the material and all that. So all these various areas which I'm covering, you can find in some of the textbooks that I'm talking about, and you can uh, get more details there, right? So uh, so so you can see that there's a there was a convection tube, and the convection tube is filled with water and it's clamped. Right, and then you put uh, some few crystals of potassium permanganate uh, through a funnel onto the con convection tube. You saw that uh, scientists doing it, and then uh, it was uh, then we put a candle on the convection tube on the uh, right corner, right, and then you saw how the the the, the potassium permanganate was moving. First, you saw the it was moving the the, the sorry. The water was moving towards the heat source and then after a while you saw that the water started moving away from the heat source and so and that led to a flow of water right a flow of water and i explained that that is what's called a convection current or a convection flow right so this experiment really proves the characteristics of convection the characteristic of convection is that it requires the particles to move the substance and um, you see that the the uh, the colder uh, liquid moves towards a hotter area and then it moves from hotter to colder area. So it actually circulates, it leads to a circulation, what you call a circulation, right? Circulation of the liquid circulation of liquid, right? So that is about uh, convection. All right. Now let us go ahead and uh, look at the next uh, whole section. Next uh, slide. So this is actually talking about convection in gases, right? Now the same way as the convection in liquids. It's it, the, the there's there'll be, there's going to be convection gases too. Again, I'm going to show you a video which uh, kind of shows this convection. So, this video shows convection in gases. Now, let us see what what the scientist is going to do. So he has lighted the candle, right? He has lighted the candle and then he is going to close that chamber. So there's a small chamber inside which the, ca the candle is burning. And then to the chamber, there are two glass tubes which are connected. You can see that, right? There are two glass tubes connected. Now let's see what the scientist is going to do. He's burning paper and when the burn paper burns, what happens? Now, this is something which I'm sure you'll be able to explain now. When the perp when the paper is burned, again you go back to the basics of heat, there is going to be a chemical change is happening and that is what is called combustion and when the combustion happens, what happens? There is ash produced 
and then you can see carbon dioxide fumes, right? You can see the black fumes being produced because of the burning of the paper, right? So that's what you'll see here too. So there is the burning which leads to some fumes being produced, right? So it is uh, just waiting for the uh, to extinguish, and you can see some fumes being produced. And he's closing it, so he's putting it, and you can see the fumes. Don't you see the fumes? And see the movement of the fumes. How is the movement of the fumes? It is coming from here, right? And it is going this way and going out. So the movement of the fumes is which way? How is the movement of the fumes? So the movement of the fumes is this way, right? It is going this way and then it's going out like this way, right? So it's coming this way and it's going out this way. Why is that happening so? Don't you see the similarity of behavior that you saw in water and the convection tube here too? What's happening? Where is the hotter area? The hotter area is here. So this is a hotter area, right? Hotter region is here, right? This is a hotter region. And then, so always the, the particles of the substance here, actually here, what is it? The substance is nothing but air. So air is a substance. Because this chamber is filled with air. And it is just, these fumes are just highlighting the, the way the air is moving. Why? Because the fume is also, fumes are also getting mixed up with air and the air is carrying the fumes with it. So, you are seeing really how the air is moving. That's what the fumes, is. the fumes is just helping us to know that. Right? But really, the air is, whether the fumes, the fumes from the paper is there or not, the air is moving the, the, this way right so you can see that the air is there inside this and the air is moving first towards the hotter region and then away from it right so again the moment is first towards heat source and then and then away from it so towards the heat source and then and then away from it Right? So, again, this experiment is also proving the exactly the same fact. So, it's showing how the convection happens in gases and the property in the characteristic is exactly the same. So, the, the characteristic characteristic of convection in gases is same as in liquids. So that's what you found, right? So the characteristic of convection in gases is same as in liquids. First it, worked, uh, it flows towards or uh, moves, moves towards heat source and then away from it, right? So the same characteristic as you saw in liquids, sorry. Okay, so let's go back to the presentation now. So, uh, you can see the same explanation here. So, you have a rectangular wooden box, which is like the chamber, the blue chamber that you saw there, with one side fitted with the glass, plain glass, and on top there are two glass chimneys which are nothing but the glass tubes that you saw there right and then a light light a candle in place under one chimney which is a b which is the left chimney as you saw in the video and then hold an agarabhati so here in this um, in this experiment which is which is mentioned in the textbook it talks about holding agarabhati but instead you are having a um, fumes from a, a burnt paper which you saw in the video it is exactly the same the idea is i would be when the air is just is flowing you won't be able to see that because air is transparent it doesn't have any color right so you won't be able to visibly see the movement of air so just to see the movement of air we can put a uh, agarbati fumes or uh, uh, fumes of a burnt paper or something so that you can really visibly see that right so that's why we did it and you saw how the smoke was moving smoke was first moving towards a candle and then it was moving away from it right so that was the way it was so exact same behavior as that you saw in the convection tube water. 
All right. Now, fine. That's all great. So you've seen what is convection. You've seen how it works, right? Um, 